Hi, my name is Jermaine and thanks a lot for watching this video. I'm here with one of the top leadership and human capital development consultants, the CEO of Future Plus Consulting in Nigeria, the person of me, Ade Sonia. Wow. Thank you, thank you, Jermaine. Thank you for having me. Yeah. It's good to be in Manchester. It's so cold though, but it's understandable. Yeah, well, well, I'm really glad to have you and you talking to us. You know, personally, uh, me has been like a mentor to me. He's guided me through the principles and his practice in life. And that has really upped my game. I want you, you to pass some of that um, knowledge to our viewers today. So tell us a bit about yourself. Okay. Well, like I said, my name is Nia Desai. I run a consulting firm in Lagos, Nigeria, and I um, also do a lot of motivational speaking. Uh, some people call me motivational speaker, some call me motivational teacher, in the sense that my, my, my sessions are more practical and um, applicable, more or less. It's more like a teaching, not just mm. getting people wowed. It's yeah. more about giving them stuff to work with um, the next morning when they go to work. And um, to the glory of God, God has helped us to be able to make um, to be a voice in that industry, and not just be a voice in that industry. To also raise a lot of people also who have become voices also in the industry. So it's been a wonderful um, experience for me, and um, we hope to do more. And then it's been great, 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 great. Oh, that's fantastic! I really like what you said about being a voice in your generation. Is that you know you can either be a voice or be a noise. Mm. You know, a voice is someone that positively impacts the generation, and a noise is someone that does negatively. Oh, yeah. So can you give us some tips on how to actually be an influencer, taking leadership in your generation? I number one, you know, there's a formula I share with people. Is what I call the competitiveness, uh, individual competitiveness formula, and uh, it's basically this: what you know plus how you express what you know, multiplied by who you know and who knows you. Wow. Now, if you can work on that formula, you find that you always, always, almost all the time be a voice in your industry, be a voice in your generation. Now, the question is that what do you know? You must have what we call the breadth and the depth of knowledge. And basically, that is knowing something about everything and knowing everything about something. If you're a lawyer, you need to know everything about law. But that doesn't stop. That's the depth of knowledge. Now there's the breadth of knowledge that you need to know something about everything. So you need to know about your health, you need to know about politics, you need to know about uh, medicine, you need to know about all those things. So that's what makes you rounded. After you've done that about knowing something, so the next thing you need to know is to be able to express what you know. Now it's one thing for you to know so much more than me, but if I can express the little that I know, I'm, a, I'm perceived or assumed to know more than you because so, communication. Uh, about communication. So, how do you express what you know? You need three things. You need communication, you need creativity, and then you need to be a lot uh, confident about yourself. Yeah. So, once you have this place, you may, then you begin to project what you know. Well, that's fantastic. You said you need to be able to communicate, you need oh, to yeah. be creative, and you must have Confidence. confidence definitely you know because many people may be able to communicate they may be creative but having the confidence and self-belief that they can actually do it oh yeah it's something mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. lacking and you as a motivational speaker is evident you actually build people up to do that oh yeah you have to work on your self-esteem you have to work on the way they perceive themselves or the way they imagine themselves their thought level their energy level because your thought level drives your energy level mm. once you don't have the right thoughts then your energy level drops and once your energy level drops your productivity drops immediately wow. so what you need to do is control what they see what they hear how does that increase your energy level when that increases your energy level you just find out that you can do so much than you could do yesterday why because you just changed your thoughts you know, what affects your thoughts what you see and what you hear which of the five senses but the most powerful of the five senses are what you see and what you hear so if you can control that and then make sure that the only positive thing that comes into you, into your mind, then your energy level rises. Once your energy level rises, then you'll be able to do more. And apart from that, there's a way your energy level affects your positive mental attitude, and then your positive mental attitude affects the horror that you carry. Every man has a magnetic field. So what you, um, your magnetic will determine the kind of people you attract That's towards yeah. you. And then that takes us back to the formula. Then, you know, we started with uh, what you know, plus how we express what you know, multiplied by who you know who knows you. Yeah. Now, you can see that when you begin to attract people, the people you're attracting to your life now 
amplifies what you know. Fantastic. So Fantastic. You, you need to know how to build relationships, you need to know how to build um, associations and strategic things. So just one just one to amplify. And that's so fantastic. It's about energy level and people are always drawn to people with a light oh, yeah. or you know or even a um, superior energy level. And energy level you can often be seen like passion. You know I tell people that you know uh, passion is something you can pass on. And you spoke about a positive mental attitude. The, yeah. If you have a positive mental attitude within you mm. and it exudes in everything that you do, oh, yeah. you know, you're passionate and you begin to draw passionate people who can mm -hmm. actually further your dreams. Now, we know people out there who, who are creative, who are who are learning to communicate and who are now confident from what you've told us about now. How can they on a daily basis use that passion, that energy to achieve their goals in life? Okay, yeah, let's see, briefly, uh, that's when you need to know how to focus. Mm -hmm. You need to be focused. What's your what's your vision? Mm -hmm. What's your objective? Because it's one thing for you to have energy, but it's another thing for you to focus that energy mm -hmm. on a particular thing or a particular objective. Fantastic. You told me something a while ago. It's called the law of concentrated impact. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> a long time ago. A long time ago, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> it's really me. It, it, it just shows that... Um, you need to just concentrate your mm. effort on something. Exactly. I can tell people um, Nelson Mandela did not do anything for any other person apart from his own people mm. in um, South Africa. He fought for them. But he did it so well. He concentrated his effort on doing something great for his people. Mm. And then that great thing amplified, mm. was amplified. And before mm. you know what was happening, we all accepted him as, a, as an elder statesman. Yeah. We loved him. And then the question is that, did he fight for me? No, he didn't mm -hmm. fight for me. He fought for his people. people. So by the time you focus your attention on a particular thing, you have an objective. You focus your attention on that. You focus the energy on that. You focus your confidence, your communication, and your creativity on that single mm -hmm. thing. There's a way, if you do, when you do well with that, it just kind of gives you a leverage to penetrate the other industries. Fantastic. It's just, it's not about focus. It's not about focusing on the objective, but you need to know. What objective do you have? Because you can have passion, but if you don't have any objective, don't have a vision, don't have what you want, run into it, then it's a waste of. You just dissipate the energy and then Depend you just scatter it, and then you are wondering, yeah. I'm not achieving anything with this. Yeah, it's just like a magnifying glass. You know, when you put it to the sun yeah. and oh, you, yeah. you focus the energy, and when it touches the hardwood or paper, it burns the paper and that spread. Exactly. So there are times when you focus, the lens, then yeah. your light can now spark like a fire and can you oh, spread yeah. the word and impact yeah. people's Fantastic. lives positively. Oh, so with that being said now, you know, people are out there they're saying, you know what, I'm going to focus on my dreams, I'm going to focus on what I, I am meant to do. But some people are like that, but other people don't actually know what they are meant to do in life. What are some of the pointers? You know, talking about vision, purpose, that people can know that this is the main thing I should focus in and I should go for it and make it successful in my life. Okay. What it is. I think the start way is for them to check their heart desire. What is in that their heart part of well, what is in that they um, their natural habitat, you know, yeah. you can this is what I feel comfortable, this is what I think about, this is what I I when we talk about this is my heart wants. And that's why, and again, they need to look at their personality. Mm -hmm. Their personality also talks about, you know, um, their temperament, mm -hmm. where they fall. It is very hard. It does, it's not, doesn't mean that it's not possible. Mm -hmm. It's very, very hard for you to see somebody who is an introvert mm -hmm. who has the desire, mm -hmm. they have the desire to go for um, marketing or to go for um, <coughs> something that is so um, exposing to the public. So when you look at your personality, your personality is also an indicator. Mm. It is not final though, yeah. but an indicator of what you could be focusing your attention on. Mm. And then you see, uh, what we talk about um, the heart desire. Uh, we talk about um, personality. Then we talk about the people around you. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. the way the people around you can let you know this is what you're supposed to Very focus true. your attention Very on. True. Because uh, if they're sincere enough, they will tell you if you really got the skills to sing. Yeah. If you don't know how to sing, they just might be someone like you don't have to sing. <laughs> well, I mean, there are people around me who told me, no, 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 And then I got to know that. And again, I think last one, you need to also realize that what is your yesterday like? Hmm. Uh, I'm sure in Michelangelo was already drawing yeah. in his uh, model's um, wall. <laughs> And everything. Yeah. I mean, Michael Jackson was like making music back from childhood. 
a way to figure out what to make money. So what are the things that I found so easy to do? Now you can discover your heart desire, the personality, the the people around you. You can ask them questions, and then your yesterday. They could just be pointed to what your um, focus should be, what you should divert your energy to. Fantastic. But the most important one is for you to, as a Christian, is for you to talk to God and ask God, God, what will you have me do? Do yeah. What do you want me to do? You created me for a reason. Yeah. And then show me that reason so that I can focus my attention. Fantastic. That's the most authentic way. Yeah. And then God begin to not some things in your heart it begins to bring people across the path yeah. sometimes you begin to watch a, a, a tv program you've been watching for years yeah. and they start making meaning to you exactly. okay. that's just the way god trying to answer that prayer fantastic um, so it could be a spiritual inclination oh definitely it has to be, be that's the most authentic yeah that time. and it could be like an inspiration just normal inspiration going from what you something as you said oh, yeah. and also just you know physically what mm -hmm. you've been doing mm -hmm. and um, this acronym sounds like happy, you know, if you discover your purpose, you live an app, happy, happy, very happy, happy. Oh, yeah, life. oh, yeah, it sounds yeah. Like happy. Yeah, it does, yeah, it's very yeah, good. good. So, good. you guys want to be happy, you know, basically just pursue your dream, pursue your purpose, you know, and focus your energy in that direction. Now, we know you as a leadership consultant also. You've consulted some of the big companies, top companies, you know, in Africa, even Nigerian world, you know, you've your influence is special. I see you mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have, yeah. And now, now tell us, what is leadership to you? For me, leadership is inspired influence. Hmm. You know, you've always heard leadership is all about influence, but I'm so concerned about how you influence the world. Hmm. Sometimes you can influence me by cajoling me, manipulating hmm. me, or coercing me. Yeah. So I want to figure out how the influence come. Mm. So that's why I say leadership is inspired influence. Yeah. The influence must be inspired, right. pure inspiration. Yeah. It, it must be um, willingness to follow. Yeah. I can also say willing mm. where leadership is willing followers. Willing followers. You know, I want to follow you not because of any of them, but because of your inspiration, inspiration your life that has inspired me, your your your, your character that inspires me. That's why I want to follow you. Fantastic. So I think that's that's for me leadership is inspired for uh, influence. Inspired influence. And I, I believe that definition is so true. You know, I talk about that leadership also is you know the ability to inspire and influence people to attain a particular goal. Yeah. Now you see many people. I only know that because you know, I learned from the best. Oh. You know? <laughs> <laughs> now you know um, apart from that happening uh, now a leader also has to be taking people towards a specified goal oh yeah definitely. now how can you um as this leadership consultant tell people what they need to do as leaders or even just as team leaders also in small groups of big organizations what are some of the practical steps they can take towards getting their team moving in one direction uh, then, you know when it comes to things like this you need to find out every leader trades you trade with your followers, you trade uh, by getting their commitment towards uh, meeting your goal. And so you're trading whether you like it or not. So the question you ask yourself is how are you trading with them? Now, there are two kinds of trade. There's something they call the trade by barter, which has been greatly modernized. Now you have your money, you have your goods. Give me your money and I give you my goods. The same thing if you're leading a team. Okay, you give me your time, and then the company pays for your time. Yeah. So that trade on back. Yeah. And a leader cannot afford to stay there. Yeah. There's something else called trade by bonding. So it's, bond it's going, it's going yeah. beyond barter. It's going beyond the fact that we're paying your salary. That's why you're coming to offer your service. Yeah. We are more like brothers. We are more like I've been able to sell my vision, got into my vision, not buying into the pay. Mm. Bought into the vision. You can see yourself in that vision. You can see yourself in that objective. You can see that, okay, if I fulfill this, I'll be fulfilling part of my own career path. When a leader gets to that point, then there is nothing called impossible again for the team. Fantastic. So for you to move from batter to bonding is where the new job is. So Fantastic. You must be able to bond with the people. You must show them care. You must show them love. You must show them that. I am here for you guys. In other words, their pain must be your pain. Yeah. Yeah, their joy must be your joy. And then you must use your power and your position to make sure that you give them relevance. Yeah. Because by the time they know that, okay, you've got my back, so they can always get your own objective. Wow. wow. That's really amazing, you know, from battering 
to bond them. You understand? And that is a very, very good transactional relationship that leaders should actually have, you know, both transcend from just transactional to being, you know, more inspirational. And that's fantastic. Now, we've seen, you've spoken about leaders influencing their team to a specified goal, you've spoken about how you can discover your purpose, you know, being happy with that acronym. We also spoke about, you know, general things like how you can actually you know develop that creativity communication and also be confident in the living your dreams okay. now in this day and age we know like in africa we have like a leadership um, um john Maxwell said when i asked him in florida the other day he said you know what that it's a leadership deficit that we have but i believe that that deficit is also an opportunity for us to raise a new generation of leaders who will be purposeful, patriotic, oh, yeah. and be able to push the dream of a new Africa or new Nigeria. Tell us something about what you feel is the, is the future for Africa, the future for Nigeria, and what the new leaders you know, need to start doing to ensure that that dream becomes a reality. Okay, you know, when we talk about new leaders, I want to see that the new leaders are actually people who are just um, coming up right now. Mm -hmm. A new leader, as far as I'm concerned, is the one that has been well tutored. Mm -hmm. So if you have not been well coached or thought, then you cannot be taught, you cannot be tagged as a new, new leader. Yeah. So when we're talking about new leadership, we're talking about the people who actually went to a leadership school, who have read leadership books, who have taken leadership responsibilities. Yeah. And those are the people that are home. Just like the Mark just said, you said it's said, you know, it's a big deficiency. Yeah. And that's why we need to have more leadership schools. Yeah. We need to have more um, informal gathering where people are taught yeah. leadership and are challenged to do something in the community. And I think the starting point is that look at your community, take responsibility. Get some leadership books, read it, and take responsibility. Once you take responsibility, then you can see how it works. Then you can now begin to expand. From your community, you can go to your local government, and from your local government, you can start talking about your state, and then from your state, you can start talking about your country. But it has to be built up gradually like that. But I think leadership schools need to be introduced. Anybody who's got a vision for that, who's done something with their life, and then take care you need to start this leadership school. I make sure that a lot of people are actually thoughts in the things that they need to do. Fantastic. So, um, you know, there's, 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 there's an um, ideology that leaders are born. But now we understand that leaders actually have to be built. They need to develop, they need to be taught, as you said. And I believe this is the time for us to start developing more. Many leadership uh, schools, academies, bring to our curriculum to ensure that, you know, Africa and uh, Nigeria get kind of leaders that we actually need who can navigate, who are, take, and who are willing to work to build a new nation. And, um, you know, we're going to be doing a lot in Nigeria now, you know, and I'm going to be working with you, you know, to ensure that. You know, we bring this diaspora influence and also having some local intelligence, especially for transformation in our nation, Nigeria specifically. So tell, 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 tell me, you understand, what should we expect? You know, what is the new Nigeria that you envision? And so we can actually have something to dream about. Yeah, actually, in Nigeria, when you have a dream and you can set up a movement of your dream, in Nigeria, for me, is where there is order where the, the less intelligent is not necessarily making more than the more intelligent. Mm. I mean, in New Nigeria is where you, 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 you leave school and then you know where you're going yeah. and you can plug into the society, into the economy and your job. Mm. In New Nigeria is where you see, I mean, a nation where almost everybody from all over the world wants to come there yeah. to find out, okay, what do we do? Okay, we're not working with part of us. In New Nigeria is a, 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 a country that has all the infrastructure, and everything in place. I say, you know what? Nigeria should be. Nigeria is actually messed up yeah. when it comes to growth, when it comes to um, wonderful things happening in the continent of Africa and even in the globe as a whole. Yeah. So I think everybody who has a vision, anybody who has a passion to see growth, to see life change, to see um, to leave an indelible mark, need to start looking at how, what, and what they need to do. In Nigeria, in Nigeria. Right wow. so this is a time we need all hands to be on deck. People who got a vision, whatever you do abroad, and then you have a Nigerian blood flowing inside of you. Please know that we need you at this um, at this part of the world, in our own part of the world. Come and make your contribution. Come and do something. Start a school for us. Do something about leadership. Impact the people. It's not going to be easy initially. But I can ensure you eventually it's going to be easy. Because you see people that you have impacted, and then they're coming to tell you, thank you 
for giving. Thank you for being a blessing. Thank you for starting that school. And then you know what? There is nothing comparable to that. There is nothing comparable. All the millions in the world is not comparable to that. Wow, wow. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Well, the new Nigerian dream is more than a dream, it's a reality. Oh, yeah, it is a reality. And I, I believe that uh, with the new leaders that we spoke about, who are actually going to be confident, creative, and who are actually going to go out there to cause change, the future of Nigeria is very, very bright. Yeah, it's, it's guaranteed. It's guaranteed. And Forget about all the economic woes uh, and everything, but we so much believe in the new Nigeria. We're walking to where you, and we're going to see it. Yes, we're going we're to gonna see, see it. it. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna see it. So, diasporans, you've heard it all that we need to start contributing our own quota to Come us now. Come, Come, Come back home. Come back home. You know, Make your <laughs> do the little you can to cause a big change. You know, say little drops of water make yeah. a mighty ocean. I'm sure if everyone does little, 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 mm -hmm. we'll see the new Nigeria that oh, yeah. we all hoped and dreamed about. Oh, yeah. And I believe that our diaspora experiences will be the expertise that we we'll actually use to bring about exceptional change in our nation. Thank you so much for watching. I mean, Jermaine, you can follow me on Twitter at this is Jermaine, also on Instagram, Facebook, and everywhere. And I think, uh, Mr. Nia oh, yeah, Soya. You can follow me on Twitter at Nade Soya, N A D E S A N Y A, N A D E S A N Y A. Follow me, I think that's also my Instagram. Instagram yeah. And then my Facebook is just Nia Desai. Check me out there. Yeah. And I will be glad to interact <coughs> with you and to chat with you. Fantastic. So let's keep let's keep the dialogue rolling. Let's stay um, connected and let's ensure that you know what we keep talking about change, talking about creative ways of expressing their change, and ensuring that Nigeria and the whole world is being impacted by the power and the purpose that we put into our vision. Thank you so much. Pleasure. I appreciate your support, Pleasure. your Pleasure. leadership and mentorship in my life. Pleasure. Pleasure. You know. As you usually say, you know, I'm proud of you. You're oh. doing great things right here in the UK. Thank you very and, much. Um, wonderful. And um, shout out to uh, Adele Mia also. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're yeah. a blessing. My green jean guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you seen that here. Oh, yeah, so that's, let's uh, keep the green jean alive and let's yeah. keep on progressing and proceeding. We are ambassadors of green jean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take care, guys. Sign <laughs> out. <laughs>